In Windchill, you can use baselines to capture snapshots of a number of different objects at a particular point in time. One way to create a baseline is when you are checking in CAD documents from Creo Parametric, but you can create a baseline in a number of different locations inside of Windchill. Here I am in a standalone web browser. I'm looking at the structure of a CAD assembly. And if I go to the details page here, I can see some of the metadata about it. To create a baseline, you can go to the Actions drop down menu. And here we have Add to. Then I will choose Add to Baseline. And here we have the dialog box for creating it. Let me make this a little bit bigger for working on it. And right now we only have the one individual object listed in here. We don't have a baseline selected. You could use the find icon in order to locate an existing baseline, but I'm going to create a brand new one. And then in this form, we can type in a name for it. One very common situation that I create baselines is before a design review. So for example, I can create a baseline before the preliminary design review and then before the critical design review. And then you're able to compare CAD documents or WT part structures, whatever you want to capture at that point of time you can do. All right, so for this particular situation, I am working on an advanced tank and we are going into our CDR. So that will be the name of the baseline. You can write in a description and you can specify whether it is protected or not. Here we have the option to lock it. You can always lock it later on. And we have a standard lifecycle template that will be used. For the folder, I'm going to use the icon in order to change to another folder. Let me go up a couple of levels. And in my product, I have a folder set aside just for my baselines. That way I can capture them all in one location. Then I will click the OK button. And our new baseline is listed up here. Right now we only have the current selected object listed inside of here. I can select the object and then use the collect related objects icon in order to bring up another form. And right now it is grabbed. If I take a look inside of here, it looks like it's grabbed all of the different dependencies of this particular object. Let me select all the different rows. And that way I can also collect any related WT parts. And let me sort by the number column. And that way we can see that in our list right now we have 222 objects. And so we have each of the CAD documents and their WT parts for this entire CAD structure. You can also select any related drawings if you want to add them in here as well. Other different related CAD documents, like if you had eCAD documents, you can add other standard documents. There are a variety of different types of objects that you can add in here. Let's click the OK button. And now we have all the different objects listed inside of here. I am happy with this. Let's click the OK button. So now let's navigate to where that baseline is. I will go to the product, go to my baselines folder, and here you see what the baseline looks like. I can click on the link and we can see here we have the details. Then if you go to related objects, it lists all the different objects that are in this particular baseline. And you also have a history tab, but right now the maturity history just shows that it is in work. Just want to mention that you can also use set state or you could actually even reassign your life cycles. You can manage this like any object that has life cycles with it. All right, let's say that I decided that, okay, this is good. I've got all these different CAD objects, but maybe I have a document that I also want part of this baseline. Well, anything pretty much that is inside of Windchill, you can add to a baseline. Let me navigate using the breadcrumb trail. I will go to my documents folder, and here we have a PowerPoint presentation 
that goes along with this design review. So I can go to actions and then in the list, let's find the add to command and then add to baseline. And then here we can use the find in order to search for it. And so for the name of this, I think I put CDR in the name. Let's use the search button. And here we have that one. Let's click OK. And then OK. And now I will use the recently accessed list. Let's go to our baseline. And I can see that here we have the object listed as one of our baseline objects. Previously we had 222. Now we have 223. And so let's say that I have all the different objects in here. I don't want anyone making changes to this. You can go to the actions menu and choose the lock button and be aware that people can actually make changes to the baseline. So for example, if we go to edit, here's where we can change those different properties, like whether it's protected or whether it's locked. Let me cancel out of here. But also for the baseline objects, you can add additional objects. You can remove objects. You can select different objects and then use the collect related objects icon as well. And you can see that we have a lot of the same different commands from the actions drop down menu. But you can also use this in order to add the different objects to a workspace in case you wanted to do something to it. But let's go to the actions drop down menu and choose lock. And that way we have locked our particular baseline so that people cannot make changes to it. We can see that underneath attributes, it is locked by me. Also, if you take a look in the top line, there is a little lock icon indicating that, again, the baseline is locked. So in this way, this is how you can create a baseline to make this snapshot of all these different particular objects at their particular version that they were added to the baseline. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.